All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone is well. Today we are going to look at related rates and more problems, examples of related rates, and these are gonna be the shadow variety of problems. Within the shadow variety of problems, we're gonna find out there are three variants, two very, very similar, and one that's a little bit different, although still not that bad. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. It's been an interesting few days. Uh, any feedback that you have about my videos, I'd love for you to either you know, shoot me an email or drop it on Google Classroom or put it on YouTube. I don't really care. I'll find it regardless of where you put it. Um, so here we go. So these particular problems all involve shadows, so that we're going to have to have a light source. So I'm going to create a light source that's going on here. That's not really, let's try and get a straight line here. Um, that's still not a straight line. Let's pretend that's a straight line. Uh, why, whatever, it's not a straight line. Um, and so we've got a lamp. And so on the top of the lamp right here, um, there is our light source. Yay, light source. Um, bloop, 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 bloop. So it's casting light. Um, and what we're going to have is my good friend, Brandon. Brandon is going to be uh, near the light source. So here's Brandon. Um, turns out Brandon, I don't know how, Brandon, how tall are you? Let's pretend that you're 1.8 meters tall. I don't think you're quite that tall, but what do I know? Uh, so there's Brandon. He's 1.8 meters tall. And Brandon, he is going to be, I don't know, how about he is four meters from the lamp post. And the lamp post itself is going to be five meters tall. So the lamp, as you can imagine, given that it's a light source, is going to be casting a shadow. And so that means, here's my straight line again. So Brandon has a shadow that is being cast from the lamp. So here's Brandon's shadow. And my good friend Brandon, he is walking away from the lamp. Brandon is going to be walking at a solid 1.5 meters per second. So he's gonna, kind of got a, a quick walk going on and he's walking away. Well, you can imagine that the tip of Brandon's shadow is going away from the lamp post as well. And so this is going to be case one. And so case one, it's actually not the easiest case. Uh, it's Case two is going to be the easiest case. So case one is going to be, ah, let's do case, let's call this one case one and make it the easiest case. What we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, find out what is, how quickly is Brandon's shadow going to be growing? Now, you can imagine if Brandon was standing almost immediately under the lamppost, his shadow would be, you know, almost zero length, right? Because this light was coming straight down. Uh, Brandon being the slight young man that he is, casts virtually no shadow. And he'd have no shadow but the farther out he is the longer his shadow is so let's go case one as how about we're going to make it how quickly is brandon's shadow growing okay so i want to know how quickly brandon's shadow is growing um and we'll say a little bit more than that when Brandon is 10 meters from the lamppost. There's probably two Ps in that lamppost. Okay, so how quickly is Brandon's shadow growing when Brandon is 10 meters from the lamppost? So if he was right underneath it, his shadow would be really, really small. If he's 10 meters away, his, sh his shadow would be quite long because of the sort of oblique angle that he would be um, casting a shadow from. So here we go. So what we can do is you can see hopefully that there are two similar triangles that would be existing here. So let's grab a couple of different colors. Uh, this color. Um, so we've got one similar triangle that resides right here. So I'm going to pull that one out. And so we've got a, that's a beautiful similar triangle right there. Brandon has perfect uh, postures. So Brandon stands straight up and down making a right angle, fortunately for us. And this side on the triangle is 1.8 meters long. Um, and I'm going to call this measurement down here, because that's what we're interested in. Uh, I'm going to call it S for shadow. Um, maybe not S, because no one can tell my S's. How about L for shadow length? So I'm going to call this one L for shadow length. Um, and then there's another triangle here. Let's grab a different color. This is a different color, I'm sure. Uh, and there's this one. So there's another similar triangle that exists right here. Here it is. I'm going to pull that one out as well. Um, and so what we've got is another similar triangle. Uh, this side is now five. And I, I don't want to necessarily assign a full variable for this. Um, 
I'm going to assign a variable for this distance right here, and I'm going to call it d for, uh, d is a bad one as well, whatever, d, d for distance. Um, and so that means that the base of this triangle is going to be, well, it's going to be d plus l, right? So d plus l is the length of this one. Now, we've set that all up. So let's think about our givens and our wants. So our givens, uh, we know that the lamppost height is five and that Brandon's height is 1.8. But what's really important here, according to how I have these variables laid out, is we know what dd, d distance by dt is, right? dd by dt, well, it's equal to would we say, well, he's moving at 1.5 meters per second. So this distance that Brandon is from the lamppost, it is 1.5 meters per second. So I'm going to put that in, 1.5 meters per second. We've got a snapshot value. Our snapshot value is going to be uh, D equals 10 meters, right? So we want to know when Brandon is 10 meters away. So those are some of our givens. Um, and what do we want? Well, our want, according to what we have our variables laid out as, is we want, we want to know how quickly the shadow is growing. So I want dl by dt. That's what I'm after. So I, I said we've got a couple of similar triangles here. We've drawn out our similar triangles. Let's look at the relationship that these similar triangles have. We can set them as, up as either inter triangle similarities or intra triangle similarities. Just revisit again, similar triangles, of course, because um, they both share this angle down in here. I didn't actually change the color, whatever. Uh, this angle down in here, this angle down in here, and they both have a right angle, which means that we know that this angle must match as well because of the properties of triangles. So we've got two similar triangles. So I can set this up in one of two ways. I'm going to write them both out, and it doesn't matter which way you can do. We can say that 1.8 is proportionate to 5 in the same way that L is proportionate to D plus L, okay? So the ratio of these two sides is the same as the ratio of those two sides. So that is inter-triangle similarity because we're using the relationship between the two triangles. But then there's also intra-triangle similarities. And we can say, well, the, the ratio of 1.8 to L, so these two sides, is the same proportion as the ratio of 5 to D plus L. So that is intra-triangle. And the reality is that it doesn't really matter which one you start with, and, I, and it will work out the same either way you do it. Okay, so now this is the relationship. You could imagine that we actually have the capacity right now to differentiate this as it stands, we can use implicit differentiation and we could differentiate this with respect to time. We could absolutely do that. However, it would be a bit of a challenge because we'd have to either use, you know, bring this up and add a negative one exponent and use product rule or use quotient rule right now uh, with some chain rule going on at the same time. However, if we just think about it for a little bit, we can do some simplification and make our life way, way easier. So I'm going to multiply, I'm just going to cross multiply, right? I'm going to multiply up, multiply up. So we're going to end up with 1.8D plus 1.8L is equal to 5L. I'm going to gather up some like terms here. So we're going to have 1.8D is equal to 1, 5 minus 1.8, I guess is 3.2L. So that's if we had gone that route. Look, look what would happen if we did this. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. Move those ones up. We're going to get 1.8D plus 1.8L is equal to 5L. And look, it's the exact same. So it doesn't matter how you set your initial ratios up. It's going to work out the same way. So here we go. This is lovely. We know what DD by DT is. And what we really want to know is what DL by DT is. So I'm going to differentiate with respect to time. So it's going to be 1.8 dd by dt is equal to, well, 3.2 dl by dt. Lovely. We know what dd by dt is. I've already forgotten what it was. 1.5 meters per second. So I can actually substitute that in. So we're going to get 1.8 times 1.5 
is equal to 3.2 dl by dt. You're going to divide both sides by 3.2. I'm going to divide by 3.2. Those are going to go away, and we're going to end up finding out that. What is that going to be? So we're going to have um, 1.8 times 1.5 divided by 3.2, and we're going to find out that it is 0.8. Four. Let's just do that. 0.84. So 0, 0 0.84, and that would of course be meters per second dl by dt. So we would make our little concluding statement. We would say, therefore, uh, Brandon's shadow is growing at. 0 0.84 meters per second. And you might ask yourself, well, wait, 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 wait. We didn't even make use of all of the information here. No, we didn't. It said, I asked for when it was 10 meters from the lamppost. And, and we didn't even substitute that in. So what can we infer from that? Well, it means that his shadow is going to actually be growing at a constant rate. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Had we not done the simplification that we did here in this step to go from here to here, if I had a differentiated right here, I would still have some of those variables left over. And that's where we could actually conceivably end up substituting that 10 in. Um, it would still work out the same way if we were super careful and we actually got through it. Um, but it's, it's not a necessity if we do our simplification beforehand. So there's the first case. The first case is how quickly is the shadow itself growing? Uh, let's look at case two. And case two is a little bit more challenging, although no, not dramatically so. So case two is going to be how quickly is the tip of the shadow moving across the ground? So let's set this one up very similarly. Um, so we're going to have another lamp post, all about the lamp posts. Uh, that doesn't really look like it's right angle, but let's just say that it is standing up straight. Um, how about we have light of this color? I don't know what color this is, but there's our light. Yay, team. Uh, and what we're going to have now, go back here. Um, so uh, who is this going to be? I don't really care. You can pretend it to be whoever it is. Um, this person is, um, I don't know, this lamp post is going to be six meters tall. This person is, is shorter. How about this person is only 1.5 meters tall? Clearly not drawn to scale. Um, and this person is going to be a distance of, how about, uh, this one is, I don't know, seven meters from the lamp post. Uh, in this case, the person is walking toward the lamppost uh, at a, you know, so they're walking toward the lamppost at two meters per second. Now, the toward the lamppost is, is you know, that's going to be relevant. Um, and what we want to know is, again, this is going to be casting a shadow. Uh, so here's our shadow, right? Uh, shadow along here. But instead of trying to figure out how quickly the shadow is growing, or in this case, if we were tracking that, it would be how quickly is the shadow contracting because it's getting smaller. We want to know how quickly this spot right here is booking across the surface of the parking lot. Um, so we're going to set this one up comparably, but, but this time it's going to be a little bit different. Because we want to know how quickly the tip of the shadow is moving. We want to know not how quickly it's moving with respect to this person here. We want to know how quickly the shadow tip is moving against some fixed object. So the fixed object we're going to use, of course, is going to be the lamp post itself. So I'm going to add some variables in a different fashion here. Um, I'm going to call this distance here all the way out to the tip of the shadow. I'm going to call it T. How about that for tip of the shadow? And then 
I don't, I don't have a measurement for this really. Um, and, and I don't, I don't want to add a variable to that piece here, but I know how quickly this distance is changing. So again, I, I'm going to add a variable for this distance here, grab a different color, this color, whatever that is. Um, and so I'm going to call this distance and I apologize for how messy this diagram is getting. I'm going to call that D again. So I'm going to, you know, think about pulling out those two different triangles. So I'm going to have this triangle here again. So the triangles are going to be the same two triangles. We're going to get the smaller triangle. Um, and we know that this is, uh, 1.5 meters. Is that what it was going to be? Yeah, I think, oh no, that's how fast they were moving. Did we say how tall this person was? Oh, I apologize. Uh, yeah, no, we did 1.5. Uh, 1.5 meters tall, um, and, and I'm going to leave that blank for the time being, um, and then we're going to go back and we're going to get uh, this triangle. So this triangle here. So we've got the bigger triangle again. Uh, and we know this is 6 meters, uh, and we call this side down here, we called it T. And we know they're similar triangles for the same reason. It's going to be a right angle here and a contained angle here. So they're similar triangles, um, similar triangles. Uh, that would mean that this length, well, it would be, I guess, T minus D, right? T minus D. So there's our two triangles, and they're similar triangles. So we can set up our relationships again. Again, it doesn't matter whether we go intra-triangle or inter-triangle. Uh, so I'm going to say that 1.5 is related to 6 in the same way that T minus D is related to T. Again, if we weren't being considered, we could differentiate right away, and we could actually, you could actually get all the way through this problem again. Um, so let's think about our givens again. So I didn't list them out, but we have a given here. We know in this case that DD uh, by DT is equal to, uh, we said two meters per second, but we're going to get really, really careful. We have to be really critical. We know that this distance is decreasing. So that means that yes, indeed, this has to be a negative value. Um, I, I didn't actually ask for a snapshot. If I wanted to screw you up a little bit, I could say, how about when this person is five meters away from the lamppost? Um, and, and again, if we differentiate it incorrectly, that would be a value you'd actually, you'd, you'd need, but I'm not going to give you that because we're going to do this cleverly. Um, and what we want, uh, we want, well, we want, oh, T was a horrible name. Uh, let's change this. Goodness, I apologize, guys. Um, and you can probably figure out why that is because T is going to be reserved for time. So let's get rid of that T. Let's call it um, R. Uh, my apologies, R, 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 now I'm a pirate, R. Um, and so what we want in this case is dr by dt. That's why t was a horrible choice. Uh, that's what we're after, is dr by dt. Um, so we're going to take this expression here, and we're going to do some simplification. So I'm going to cross multiply. So we're going to get 1.5 r is equal to 6r minus 6d, and we're going to simplify. I'm going to lob that over there, lob this over here, so we're going to get that 6d is equal to 4.5r, and we can differentiate that right away. Uh, so we're going to get that 6dd, um, 6dd by dt, is equal to 4.5 dr by dt. I know what dd by dt is, it's negative 2. So it's going to be back here, 6 times negative 2 um, is going to be equal to 4.5 dr by dt. And I'm going to divide both sides by 4.5, divide by 4.5, divide by 4.5. That's going to go away. And then we're going to type that into our calculator and we're going to get an answer. So it's going to be negative 12 divided by 4.5. And we're going to get two point, negative 2.67-ish. So what we've got here is dr by dt is equal to negative 2.67. Okay, And that would be meters per second. Now, 
kind of judging our reasonableness, that actually makes sense um, that it's going to be larger than two meters per second because the shadow is approaching the lamp post more rapidly than the person is approaching the lamp post, right? Because out here the shadow was farther away, but when this person gets immediately underneath the lamp post, the person and the shadow are there simultaneously. So it had to go more quickly, the tip of the shadow, than what the person itself did. Okay, does that make sense to everybody, hopefully? Um, I wanna just highlight, I indicated that these two cases, case one and case two, if you accidentally set them up incorrectly, here's kind of a neat thing that we could do. Imagine that you accidentally set up to find the tip of the shadow when in fact that you needed the length of the shadow. Well, here's what's kind of cool. This negative 2.67, that's how quickly the tip of the shadow is moving with respect to the lamp post. But we know the person is moving at negative two meters per second. So if the person is moving at negative two meters per second and the tip of the shadow is moving at 2.67 meters per second, the difference between those is how quickly the shadow itself is shrinking. So we would know that, for instance, if I just wanted to know the length of the shadow, the length of the shadow would be decreasing. So the length of shadow by dt would be negative 0.67 because that is the difference between the person's absolute speed and the shadow tip's speed. So that would be the length of the shadow. So anyways, back to this problem, we would say, therefore, the tip of the shadow is approaching the lamp post at 2.67 meters per second. Now again, I, I've, by my saying that it's approaching the lamp post, I'm not going to be including a negative here because if you said it's approaching at negative 2.67, that would mean that it was departing and it is not. Okay, so those are the first two cases. Just to make this video a little bit more approachable, I'm going to stop it now and then I'm also going to post a second follow-up video that has the third, uh, the third variant. Okay, thanks. See you guys in a bit.